Da hoi hoi. Back in 2016, the Washington Post ran an experiment. They asked Joshua Bell, one of the world's greatest violinists, to busk in a subway station to see how people reacted. During that experiment and during his performance, 1,097 people walked by him. And of that 1,097, only seven people stopped to listen to him. And during his 45 minute performance, playing on a Stradivarius violin no less, Joshua Bell made a whopping $32.12. That's just a little bit lower than his several hundred thousand dollars an hour rate. So why did people walk right by one of the greatest violinists in the entire world? Well, it's all about context. In a concert hall, everyone is there for him. People paid to be there and they want more. But in a subway station, people just want to get where they're going. The context of where this amazing violinist is placed matters a great deal to how much people care about his work. And unfortunately, almost nobody within our industry ever considers context. We just want people to listen to our music and sound no matter what the context is and then just be in love with us and hire us right away. So we spend a lot of time making things like demo reels and then blast them to everyone we can. AAA companies, our accountant, and even our personal milk delivery boy. Then after all this effort and all this sharing, we're shocked that nobody cares about our reels and no one wants to hire us. That's because we get the context all wrong. We get into something that I call the demo reel trap, which is the career equivalent of playing in a subway nonstop for people who don't care hoping we get noticed. So here's what we're going to be covering today. Part one, the ins and outs of the demo reel trap. Part two, when demo reels are necessary. And part three, how to share your work wisely. Like I mentioned earlier, many budding composers and sound designers fall into the demo reel trap. This is when they focus 100% of their energy and self-loathing on the fact that either, one, they don't have a reel, or two, the reel they have isn't good enough. They tend to think that the reel is everything, and that once they make this perfect reel, then they can start networking and talking to people and doing the things that a professional would actually do to get work. And even though everyone does this, that process doesn't work. If it did, way more people would have jobs in game audio. But the thing we need to remember is that at first, almost nobody's gonna care about our demo reels. Nobody relaxes on a Friday night thinking, you know what, I'm gonna go listen to some demo reels tonight. Frankly, reels are kind of a boring experience for everyone involved. Think of one like an eighth grade math textbook. No one wants to read it and no one wants to write it. However, if we make friends and build connections while we're working on our demo reels, then people will be far more receptive to listening to it, giving us feedback, or even hiring us without listening to our demo reel at all. Now, demo reels are super helpful in a lot of cases, so don't take this as me telling you to never make one. They can be quite handy, and pretty much every AAA company that has a publicly posted job online will require a demo reel. In those cases, having a quality reel is key, because these companies get hundreds, if not thousands, of applications for the same job, and need some way to quickly vet all of the applicants. Even so, there are wiser ways to show our work and use our reels than just shotgunning them out to countless people, hoping that we get hired or hoping that we get feedback from a total stranger. And that real core of that wiser way is to make friends within the industry. 95% of audio people will ignore me on this one, but hear me out. If no one knows who we are, the odds of anyone wanting to hire us are drastically reduced, amazing reel or not. One of my podcast guests recently, Jean-Yves Ponton, had a really good way of putting this. You never want to be a name on a piece of paper. You can send a pro or a company the greatest reel on the planet, but the odds of them listening to it or even receiving you really well is much lower if they have no idea who you are, if you're just another name on another piece of paper. But if you bother to make long-term connections with people in the industry and then send in your reel and then apply for jobs and then ask for feedback, then people will be far more receptive to hearing your work and even recommending you for jobs. Heck, if you've made connections over a long enough period of time, people will start hiring you without even asking to hear your work, even if your work isn't as good as someone else's, but but they know you better. Think of a reel as a really nice cherry on top to your networking efforts, but not a total replacement for them. But a cashew upside down chocolate espresso tort, you say. All of these job listings are demanding a reel, so I need to make one right now. Yes, that's true. Many public job listings will require you to have a reel, which means you should have one when you apply. But it will also help a great deal if you already interacted with people in the industry or on that team specifically, so that they're more receptive to the resume and reel you do send. Again, don't focus on your reel to the exclusion of everything else like most people do in this field. Instead, make friends, build a presence, work on projects, whether they're free or paid, and have a reel. You'll find that over the long term, your reel becomes less and less necessary as your network grows and grows. But even with a great reel, it would be wise to show off your work really consistently. A reel does basically nothing to garner interest in you. Again, no one wants to listen to them. I know countless people in the field who have gotten jobs, myself included, purely off of the fact that they're posting their work regularly online so people can see them doing their thing. We have to
have to be showing our work consistently. And a reel is no replacement for that. We can't make the mistake of posting our reels online and thinking that that's all it takes. So let's cover what we learned today. Number one, while demo reels can be very useful, they're not the end all be all that most composers and sound designers think they are. Number two, even if we have the best reels on the planet, they won't really do a whole lot unless we also network and talk to people in our field. Number three, as your reputation and your experience and your network increase, you'll find that your reel becomes a little less necessary over time. Number four, even if you do have a great reel, there's no replacement for showing your work off consistently. And that can be done within things like Discord communities, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or anything like that. People who show off their work consistently without begging for work and without saying, look at me, look how great I am, get a lot of work. So while we may not be a top shelf violinist playing in a subway, that is how most of us tend to treat our career. We're showing our stuff off in the wrong context over and over again, wondering why this thing isn't working. So let's avoid this demo reel trap from now on. Now, outside of the students in my online courses, some of which are launching and reopening later this year, I personally don't give feedback on people's reels. It takes hours and hours to give thoughtful, useful feedback to someone on the reels, and I have to protect my time so I can keep making this stuff for you. Instead, I'm gonna post some links below so that you can start getting some small bits of feedback on your reels. If you want super deep guidance and feedback on your work and your career, that's what my courses are for. If you wanna get on the waiting list for those, just join the newsletter in the link below. All right, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Go pet a dog.